All right, students, in this video, we're going to take a look at how we can interpret velocity and acceleration from a position versus time graph. So um, I'd like you to make a sketch of this in your notes. You should start a new paper and at the top call it, actually continue on with what we have already um, underneath our definitions of independent variable and dependent variable, et cetera. So here we have velocity. And in general, in this class, we will do words and their definition in blue. So velocity is um, the rate of change of position. And we're going to write it in words, and then we're going to write it in symbols. So the symbol for velocity is V, and we do formulas in red in this class, just to make it easier to, um, to help all the different information stand out. So velocity V, and then is, and I probably could just use the word is in there. That may have made more sense. Velocity is, that's the equal sign. And then wherever we see the word rate, we know we're going to divide by a time interval. And we show that as a delta t. And change of position, we can show change as um, delta and position as x. Okay, now when we do change of position, that always means that we are subtracting, um, when we do change in position, we write that as x final minus x initial. And in the future, we'll just use f, xf and xi as those symbols. And I want you to recognize that I'm writing these as smaller letters underneath, what we call a subscript over delta t. Now, the mind-blowing mind thing about this is that if we look at this graph here, um, we're going to see that slope of the line ends up being the velocity. So when we look at this example, we can see that it's pretty much a straight line for part of it. And I'll actually put a line in so we can see that. Let's drop a line right here. And if we move that around, we can see that that portion of it is pretty much straight. But then... Now this part here in blue, this is where we can, ex can say that it is experiencing constant velocity. And we can... Okay, so once we have this line drawn, we can see that we can calculate the slope of it. And I'm going to take... I'm going to look at it from these two data points. From that data point across and from this data point going down. So the vertical is, as we know it in math, this is our rise. And the rise for this, if you look at what this is, this is position versus time. So this is actually the variable x for position. And this is actually the variable t for time. So our rise is going to be our change in x. In other words, it went from being at this value up to this value of 30-something, 30 35. And so let's actually, um, let's try to put these numbers in. It's a little difficult to be very accurate with this pen, but we can write that this, um, we're going to call this x initial. x initial equals uh, 14. That should be a 14. And the unit is centimeters. And this x final up here, this dot right there, this x final would be, looks like about um, 34 centimeters. Okay, so when we want to know how much uh, the rise was, we could say it rose by, so change in x is calculated this way, x final minus x initial, and that's going to equal 34 minus 14 equals 20, and that's centimeters. Let's take a look at the run. I'm going to use green for this. So the run is from here to here. And uh, maybe I should do that in dotted. Okay, so the run is actually going to be equal to delta t. 
because if you think of what is on the horizontal axis, it's time. So run equals delta t. And that equals tf minus ti. That's t final minus t initial. And what is t final? It looks like it's 6. And what is t initial? It looks like it was 4, which equals 2 seconds. So when we have rise, when we have run, now we can calculate slope. And slope, I'm kind of running out of room here a little bit. Let's see here, slope equals rise over run. And rise in this case is 20 centimeters. The run is 6 seconds. And what do we get when we do 20 divided by 6? Um, 20, 18 divided by 6 would be 3, with 2 left over, that would be 3 and 2 sixths, which is 3 and 1 third, which is 3.3 repeating. I'm going to round, round that to 3.3. And look at the units, centimeters per second. When you see that, you should recognize that that's centimeters per second, that is velocity. And so we have just calculated the velocity by actually calculating the slope. This is very important that oftentimes people will think of, um, they forget, um, well, when they do slope, they might just think of counting squares. But you have to really look at the scale you're using. And the horizontal scale for time has a much different scale than the vertical for position. So what I want to do now is I want to um, move this up a little bit. And in black, Oftentimes we'll use black for showing units. Uh, I want to summarize what the units look like for velocity. So on the top, change in position. We're just going to put meters and recognize that it could be centimeters, it could be millimeters, or kilometers, whatever. In time, we have seconds. And that makes velocity being in the units of meters per second. OK, so well, you will always see me use black for doing units. Okay.